What up, world? So, um, it's the end of summer. It's it's the tail end of Labor Day weekend, and um, that means the summer movie season is officially over. Um, and summer movie season in my world is, and what I thought was common knowledge is the first weekend in May when the Amazing Spider-Man 2 came out to Labor Day weekend, to this weekend right here. Um, and every at the end of every year, I do my top 10 movies of the entire year. Right now, I'm going to do my top five. And, man, th this this year was crazy, man. We had tons of superheroes, a Disney character, Western comedies, sequels out the ass, a couple love stories, and, and a lot of motherfucking mutants, man. So, um, just off Jump Street, man, let's go. My number six, so my honorable mention, the one movie that didn't get in, 22 Jump Street. I, it's, the, it's the comedy of the year so far, in my opinion. It was so hilarious. The trailers made it look like it was going to be a, a, basically a fucking scene-for-scene scene story, joke-for-joke, joke, repeat of 21 Jump Street. And no, man, like, it had so many surprise laughs that weren't in the trailers. Um, I didn't see coming who the villain was. And I, just, I can't wait for it to come on Blu-ray. Number five. At number five, I got a, I got a movie that a lot of people are going to say is the most underrated movie of the entire summer. At number five, I got, I got Edge of Tomorrow. And that's what it's called, Edge of Tomorrow. The Blu-ray got released for October in the States, in Region 1, whatever, and they, like, retitled it Live, Die, Repeat, you know, colon, Edge of Tomorrow. No, this movie is called Edge of Tomorrow. Tom Cruise, Emily Blunt, directed by Doug Lyman, uh, and Tom Cruise plays, like, the face of the military. He goes on TV, he does interviews, he's letting everybody know that everything's gonna be fine. And um, he he, and then he gets thrown into this war against these aliens, and you think that okay, Tom Cruise is gonna do this. He dies. He's gonna do it over. The movie's gonna get repetitive. Emily Blunt's gonna be a damsel in distress. No, 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 no. Tom Cruise plays a bitch. He usually plays a hero. In this movie, he plays a bitch, and then. The way that it's like, it's like a video game and he like respawns, he gets a new life and it doesn't just show the same shit over and over and over again. It just, it shows what he learns and how he advances and how he gets closer to completing the mission. And Emily Blunt is like the hero of the war. She's on posters and, and she she kick, she's kicking ass left and right. And and I love this movie and I really wish that it would have done better at the box office. So hopefully when it comes on Blu-ray, it, it sells a lot more. At number four, I got Godzilla. It's um, the reboot of, of the, old, the old Asian legendary mutated lizard. Uh, Brian Cranston, Aaron Taylor Johnson. It's directed by Gareth Edwards. It's got uh, Elizabeth Olsen, Ken Watanabe. Um, and I love this movie because you got you to gotta take it for what it is. Everybody wants to sit sit their ass down in the seat, eat their popcorn, sip on their beverage, and, and just see Godzilla. See Godzilla breaking buildings. See Godzilla fighting monsters. No, this is like a, this is like the Batman Begins, the Casino Royale, the Star Trek 09 of Godzilla. And you gotta build it up. You know what I'm saying? You gotta you gotta like okay, this happened way back in the day. And it's connected to what's happening currently right now. And the old man who everybody thinks is crazy isn't really crazy. And then you build it up. Godzilla comes out. And when Godzilla comes out, you remember that shit. The end of the movie is worth sitting through the entire thing, in my opinion. There is complaints about uh, some of the main character performances. Just because of who they are in the movie, I have no problem with the performances. Um... So, like, I love Godzilla. They've announced a sequel for 2018. Definitely looking forward to that. 
And if uh, Legendary and or Warner Brothers can cross over with Universal and eventually give us King Kong versus Godzilla, that would be dope as hell. At number three, at number three, I got a movie that is likely a lot of people's number one. And just for me, man, it's, just, it's number three. And that's Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, Robert Downey Jr. recently came out and said that this was the best Marvel movie of all time. I'm, I'm in the cinematic universe, I'm assuming. Um, to each his own. I'm sure a lot of people would say The Winter Soldier. I'm sure a lot of people would say The Original Iron Man. I'm sure a lot of people would say The Avengers. Um, but um, it's like James Gunn directed it. Chris Pratt, who's known for you know a couple roles in like Moneyball and Zero Dark Thirty and the show Parks and Recreation, he was the face of this movie. Uh, more known stars like Zoe Saldana, she's in a, in kind of a side role, but she's she's part of the team, of course. And then Bradley Cooper, Vin Diesel, are there? You only hear their voices; you don't even see them. And what what James Gunn did with this, with mixing the humor with the action and keeping it within the universe, and this was the biggest surprise of the summer to me. Because I was expecting a good movie. Marvel can do no wrong in my opinion. I love every Marvel movie for what it is. But man, Guardians was a breath of fresh air, man. Because to me, I don't know shit about Guardians of the Galaxy. Star-Lord, Gamora, Drax, The Groot, Rocket. I ain't know nothing about none of them. And there's complaints about Ronan, the accuser, as a villain. I loved Ronan as the villain. And just the way they set it up to intertwine with future movies. They've announced a sequel for 2017. And I, I can't wait to see where these characters go in the future. At number two, I got a movie that I just I loved from start to finish. And um, it it threw down. It threw down like 12 straight rounds for my number one spot. But um, I decided that it's number two. And uh, that is Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Y'all see the T. The sequel, obviously, to Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Caesar, eight years after um, after Rise, how Caesar has colonized his, um, his, his group of apes and how they're living on their own. And they haven't really had interaction with humans. And once they do, what happens? Um, you know, the villain, great who really isn't even a villain, man. This is a movie that the previews built up Gary Oldman to be a villain, Jason Clark to be a good guy. Obviously, Caesar's a good guy. And then and then Koba is just there as far as the previews. And once the movie gets going, you understand where every single character is coming from. You understand Caesar's cause. You understand Koba's cause, Gary Oldman's cause, Jason Clark's cause. You understand where everybody's coming from. It, it throws references to the first movie, man. This movie is great. Uh, Matt Reeves is going to do the third one. The way they set up the third one was dope as fuck. Um, and I believe it comes out in two years. Number one, for me, to this point right now, my number one movie of the summer and my number one movie of the year as of right now is X-Men Days of Future Past. Like, just the intertwining of the first class cast, McAvoy, Fastbender, Jennifer Lawrence, and the OGs, uh, Patrick Stewart, Ian McKellen, Hugh Jackman, uh, Halle Berry, um, and, then, and then Brian Singer, man. Brian Singer coming back to the franchise that he started, and he did not disappoint, man, because you, um, you got Peter Dinklage, and he's in the past, and he has a way that he can eliminate mutants, and the way, and he succeeded as, as of, as of, present you know what i'm saying og x-men where where the original cast is wolverine gets sent back in time by kitty pride and he has to prevent this shit from happening but he has to team with the first class cast who all like performance wise who all shut it down like for acting this is this is one of the best superhero movies of of late especially x-men wise this is a lot of people's favorite x-men movie it's it's either my one, two, or three because X Men Two is is so dope, and then and then um, X Men First Class. What Matthew Vaughn did with X Men First Class was crazy. Um, 
And then and then X-Men Apocalypse has already been announced. Like a lot of these movies on my list has already been announced for 2016 in the same weekend. And Apocalypse, one of the most iconic X-Men villains. I just I can't wait to see what they do. And uh I'm pretty sure that Channing Tatum has signed on to play Gambit and I want I want to see I always wanted to see Gambit in in an X-Men movie and X-Men Origins doesn't count to me for Gambit. Taylor Kitsch was fine, but that's not the Gambit I wanted. So, I mean, t tell me your top 5 favorite movies of the summer, man. Um The Amazing Spider-Man 2, Neighbors, Million Dollar Arm, Chef, Maleficent, um shit. What else came out, man? A, a, mil a Million Ways of Dying in the West, um, Edge of Tomorrow, Let's Be Cops, uh, Tammy, Transformers, um, Sex Tape, Planes, Fire and Rescue, uh, I think a new Step Up movie came out, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Get On Up, Expendables 3, Sin City, A Dame to Kill For. This, this, was a, this has been a great summer for movies, in my opinion. There weren't that many bad movies that I saw. And uh, everything I saw, you can look up the review on my channel, on, on my Facebook page. Um, yo, see me where you see me, man. Comment, you know what I'm saying? Hit me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Um, I'm still updating my Instagram movie page. Um, I appreciate the views, man. Peace.